Two Sydney ciders who moved to Brisbane in the past year or so are going to explain why. Jason Dacey is here in the studio. When he returned with his family from abroad, he chose Brisbane over his home city of Sydney. And Emma Renwick, who's on the line, moved to Brisbane with her two boys in October from Sydney's Inner West. Welcome, Jason. Good to see you, Cathy. You too. And Emma? Thanks for having me. Now, Jason, you have an 85-year-old mother in Sydney, yet you chose Brisbane to settle back into Australian life. Why? Well, you know, Cathy, I was away for 25 years, having the time of my life working as a broadcaster for big networks, CNN, BBC, ESPN, and I wanted a, you know, a landing pad back in Australia. I wanted to give my daughter an Aussie upbringing. And I looked at Sydney. I'd go back every you know, couple of years to see my mum and my brothers and my friends. And I, I did like what I saw in Sydney. I felt it was getting you know, too rushed, too packed, uh, not but friendly. But you've been living overseas in big cities that are bigger than Sydney, surely. Yeah, I had. I had. But it was something about you know, the Sydney I remembered growing up. And when I came up, up to Queensland, Brisbane reminded me a bit of what Sydney used to be like. You know, it was friendly. You know, there was lots of space. And um, I just wanted to give my, my young family... You know, a nice Aussie lifestyle, and I just felt that Brisbane was the best uh, on option. You know, because it's affordable, the weather's similar to what I've been, you know, enjoying in Asia, and, and I'm so glad I made uh, the choice. You know, especially what we've seen with coronavirus, move back in, you know, late 2019, and look what's happened in the world since then. And Queensland is probably one of the best places in the world to be during a pandemic. Emma, you've got uh, a couple of young sons as well, and you left behind a top job in New South Wales politics and a home in Sydney's sought-after inner west. You even spent a couple of weeks in quarantine with those primary school age boys. Now, there are people who might think that was a bit crazy. Well, I just like to think of it as dedicated to a change that will um, improve my boys' lives. And so it certainly feels like that's what's happened. Um, we have settled in a really lovely area and um, they're just doing things that they couldn't do in Sydney. They jump on their bikes and ride to school. They have friends who just drop in. They've ridden over from another suburb. They're in the pool all the time. It's just a really, really different lifestyle. And, um, you know, we were able, able to afford that because, in part because of the obviously different real estate prices. Was so, that a surprise to you? Like you were living in um, Leichhardt, I believe. That's right, yeah. I had a really close girlfriend in the neighbouring suburb and she used to send me um, frequent updates of, of great places that were in walking distance of her house um, and it was always very tempting and I think I just hit a point where, because I'm a widow, so my kids have only got me, I felt like I had turned them into orphans and so because I was just always at work and always dealing with that sort of Sydney high-pressure rat race, and it was just such a dog-eat-dog life. And I just thought one day, one of my kids said something about sort of not having enough time with me. And I just thought, oh, my God. This is one of those conversations where you just think, what am I doing? I have to upend everything and really change this. Because I tried to do it sort of from within, like staying in the same place a couple of times beforehand. And I just couldn't do it. So I just thought, well, I've really got to make a massive change to make this work. And... Being here will allow me to potentially work um, part-time or certainly, hopefully, a little less of the 14-hour um, days that I tended to do in Sydney. So, fingers crossed. Well, this part of the culture, I must have been having done that myself, um, of living and working in Sydney or Melbourne. Now, Jason, you ha were actually working in India when the pandemic was declared and you made the dash back. Was the pandemic part of your decision as well to come to Queensland? No, not really. I'd already decided on Brisbane. You know, we'd been planning for several years and you're always wondering what the right time is professionally. You know, having a good career in, in you know, Asia, in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, India. And uh, we came in July 2019. I got my family set up in the inner east of Brisbane, but I couldn't find any work here. So I would continue to travel to Asia and I was traveling to Singapore to do radio. I was doing emceeing in Hong Kong and I was hosting last year's Australian Open tennis for the India audience. And it was the early February, it was just finishing and the pandemic was closing in. And my wife in Brisbane saying, you've got to get some face masks. You, you've got to get back. This is looking pretty bad. Uh, so this, there was a scramble home. I was flying on uh, Thai Airways via Bangkok. I had a day in Bangkok to change planes and I'm seeing everybody wearing masks. So it's a mad rush home. So the decision wasn't made with the pandemic in mind, but... I still had to travel overseas for work. And then, of course, the pandemic's changed everything. I've been in Queensland 
since February without traveling anywhere else. And uh, so it's it's interesting to look back. I'm just very grateful to be here. And the timing's been perfect. You know, couldn't have timed it better when it comes to the way the pandemic has panned out. But I do miss my old life a bit of traveling overseas throughout Asia. That's that's not going to happen for a long time now. I think, yes, lots of people who travel. What about you, Emma? It doesn't sound like the pandemic had anything to do with your decision either, but are you happy oh, with that decision now? Or? I think it's sort of, I think for me, it certainly um, highlighted, I think that time of introspection highlights what you should do. You know, it gives you that time um, to really think about your life and just being at home all the time with the kids and seeing the difference in their behaviour when you're around more. Those sort of things, I think, for a lot of people have made, not necessarily that it was a, a choice that wasn't thought about before, but it's basically sped it up, I guess. Is there a downside that you found from moving from Sydney to here, to Brisbane? It's certainly a massive change. It's a big thing to do by yourself, to sell your family home and try and find somewhere in a new new town and just getting to know the place. I've never I've never moved um, interstate by myself before, so or to a town that I barely knew. I really only I'm here a few times beforehand and almost invariably just stayed at my girlfriend's place the whole time we were here. So it wasn't really a town I knew, um, but I figured it was. Everyone was talking about the fact that it was becoming a real city and not that I want a Sydney's type city, but I do want to have access to the cultural sort of institutions and stuff like that. So, and, and good jobs. So, yeah, it just made sense. And have you found those opportunities for good jobs are here? Are there career opportunities in southeast Queensland that are equal to anywhere else? I have to be frank, I haven't even looked yet. So part of my decision was to really take some time out and um, and have these holidays with the kids and get them really settled in. And then when term starts next um, year, I'll uh, start looking. And I've actually had some offers to do interstate work um, from home, that would work remotely for former um, people I'd worked for in Sydney. So I've got that as a backup, but I would like to actually just have a job in Brisbane and get to know the community better. What about you, Jason? What do you find? Uh, career opportunities equal or not? I think there's more opportunities in, in Sydney and Melbourne and I think you've got to be very strategic about it when you look at your career about the right time to move and I, I feel like I'm in the late stage of, of my career so if I was 10 or 15 years younger I may not have come but I've been coming back and forth to South East Queensland for years you know I was here in the early 80s covering the, the Commonwealth Games of 1982 and I look back then and I think wow this Brisbane is really kind of nice and in the early 90s I was working on the Gold Coast for a while and, and I would come up to Brisbane so there was always that connection on my mother's family you know, the Wagners and the Richardsons that's on my mother's side they're all from Queensland my mother was a was a kid here you know so they're all there's always these connections but I think you've got to be very strategic about when you move because there will be things about a big city like a massive city like a Sydney or Melbourne that you're not going to find in Brisbane I don't know what Emma thinks about the coffee here compared to <laughs> Leichhardt you know one of the great uh, coffee areas of Sydney no regrets so far for you Emma uh, I was, that would be the only thing I'd say is the service is not so good. But um, I make my coffee at home, so it's okay. <laughs> and what about I always you? joke. Well, I, well, I mean, I think uh, F&B wise, it's better in Sydney and Melbourne. There's no argument. But Brisbane has come on a long way. And the, the thing that Emma and I always joke about is how friendly people are here. And, yeah. you know, we're walking around the streets, you know, we live in a similar area and people say hi to you, say good morning to you. And there's that friendliness that I think Queenslanders have that's gone back for a long time. And have you that found was- that, Emma? It was almost shocking when I... Shocking. Came. It's shocking yeah. that people were friendly. <laughs> it, was, it was. Like, it genuinely was. I was standing in a supermarket queue and a woman gave me a massive grin. And I turned around to my friend and said, why, like, what's that about? And she just said, they're just friendly. <laughs> She's just smiling at you. And I, so it's taken me by surprise and I'm really enjoying that and finding that I'm smiling at random strangers a lot more as well. So that's great. Well, I hope there are many more smiles for you in 2021, Emma. Uh, thanks for joining us yeah. this morning. Thank you. And Jason, you too. Um, I hope you have a very happy new year. Yeah, same to you, Cathy. Thank you for coming in. That's uh, Jason Dacey and Emma Renwick, two Sydney siders who chose to pull up stumps and move to Brisbane. And it's part of a trend of people leaving the big southern cities for somewhere smaller.